Mr. Briscoe, are you ready? Am I what? Are you ready? Hi, John. Am I ready? <laughs> Hang Welcome on. to Stories Hang of Briscoe and Bradshaw. Wait, wait a minute. I'm not ready. What are you doing? Okay, I'm ready now. <laughs> <laughs> like dealing with a child. Welcome to Stories of Briscoe and Bradshaw. I would be Bradshaw. That would be your Chickasaw native, your Chickasaw Hall of Famer, Oklahoma's favorite son, Mr. Gerald Briscoe. And what a treat we got today. Hands of freaking stone. We got the man himself, <laughs> former NWA champion, former Mr. Knoxville, former Mr. Everything. We got Mr. Ronnie Garvin. Ronnie, welcome to the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Ronnie, I mean, uh, you know, uh, thank you. I mean, I, I screw up all the time, and John will testify to that. But we had you scheduled <laughs> for tomorrow, but we got you today, which is great. And you, you, you graciously gave us your time, and your lovely wife got us online here. We, with the three of us, we'd still be talking to black screens here. And yeah, so, I think so. <laughs> so thank Glenda again for for her help and getting getting you on, and we really appreciate it, man. We're gonna have fun here. Uh, speaking of hands and stones, my brother had a little bit of hands and stones uh, coming from from you back in his early stages, his career. But I, yeah, I you know, doing the was... research, doing do, doing the research on you, Ronnie and and uh, John and I love doing this because guys that we know, we find out so much more about. Them. I didn't know Pat Patterson broke in. Tell us a little bit about your your. No, that's no. one thing that Pat. Did it's not... oh wait a minute! It's on the internet. It's got to be true. It's got to be true. <laughs> well, the, the the guy that started me was Pat, but it, it was Pat. Uh, he was he was a wrestler that from Canada that went to Europe, and uh, he did so well. He was like a Hulk Hogan back in the fifties, in Europe in England, and where we were training at the gym, he was in charge of the wrestling, and he was main, uh, running the gym, and his name was Pat Curry. Pat That's Curry. the name he used in England. And he got over like hell. Well, somehow, I guess with success, he, he got uh, involved in drugs. So he got deported. That's how he wind up in Canada at the gym. There was a priest that owned the whole place. It was below a church underneath. And I guess the priest felt sorry for him and gave him a place to live, put him in charge of the gym. And, and he's the one that started. So that's where the whole thing got mixed up. Pat Curry and Pat Patterson. Yeah, two different guys. Well, how did how did you get to that gym? What, what when I started you, what, wrestling, what, what, how, wrestling, how did you get to that gym? How I mean, what what did you did you want to be a wrestler? Is that your whole intent? Yeah, yeah. I I, I was in Montreal, Canada, and uh, there was wrestling about five blocks from where we were, where we lived, and my, my mom took me to the wrestling matches, and uh, that's when I got the ID, and then uh, I forgot some guy took me to the to the gym it was about four or five blocks and it was always packed and uh a lot of wrestlers uh i don't know if you remember the name chin lee yeah yeah well I, he started that too wow. I, were almost all the wrestlers in montreal when they terry garvin went there pat patterson learned there wow uh, yeah and pat was gone when i started because he was like four years older than me was curry the guy that broke those guys in too uh uh probably because he was the only one there He's the only one you know wow. and what they did is uh they would have once a month they would have like a big show you know it was a nice uh, probably held about 500 people and all the students would wrestle and at the end of the year we all got trophies and uh, the, the 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 church would charge i don't know back then 50 cents maybe or a dollar whatever it was and uh the, the money went for the church and there were weightlifting, there was boxing, there was uh, almost uh, everything, judo, karate. Wow. Yeah, it was a big facility. It's still there today. Still there today. Yeah. Was that all because of the priest that that was had an interest in physical fitness and all that? Was that why the, the, he had so so much there that for, like, combat sports? Well, it's, uh, I guess he was making a lot of money off of it. <laughs> that, that, there's your answer. <laughs> well, that, that's, a, that's a church for you. <laughs> yeah, well. I never hardly ever see the priest, you know. Pat Pat Curry was was in charge of wrestling. There was somebody else in boxing. They had boxing there. They had four or five uh, uh, coaches, and they even had amateur wrestling. You know, uh, that's basically where I started the first time. And I didn't. I I had not seen the gym was behind at the back of the gym. 
and I hadn't seen the ring. So when you told me about wrestling and you showed me the mat, I was, well, this is not the kind of wrestling I want to do, you know. And uh, so, so you, you, you signed up, you thought you were doing amateur wrestling or what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't notice that. I knew the difference, but uh, I didn't understand why I had to get on my knees on the mat and uh, doing all that, <laughs> you know. But uh, that I, that didn't last very long, maybe a week. I went there a couple of times, and then I told him, I said, no, I want to do that wrestling <laughs> in the ring. They had a ring in the back there, and, yeah, that's where everybody in Montreal started. And so what, Pat Pat was gone at that time? I Pat, was. yeah, he, he was gone. Terry Garvin was gone. Uh, Chin Lee. Uh, well, I, we, I was raised uh, within five blocks of Pat Patterson. Wow! I used to go out with his sister. <laughs> she was younger. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was younger too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after after you get rolling there, how long does it take you to get out? And where 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 do you head to first? I went to Boston. Everybody, all the Every, guys, everybody goes to Boston for my. Everybody goes what, to Boston. What, what, what was that? The hookup for, for, from the church or what? No, there was. Uh, I can't remember his name now. Old time wrestler. He he's the one that told me to go to Boston, because in Montreal, you know, they you had to have a lot of experience to get booked, you know, and uh, so I, I've been wrestling probably six eight months at the the, the place there in Montreal, and. There was a guy that was going to Boston, and he said, "Well, I'll give you a ride." And we wow. went. We went to Boston. Well, when we got there, I wound up staying, but he didn't like it, and so he came back, and I stayed there. And uh, Tony Santos, Tony Santos was nothing but a, uh, you know, we were his uh, his slave. You know, the young guys. You know, there was like three or four. Yeah. And uh, I remember Hans Schmidt was always in the main event with somebody else. And uh, he had some old timers. But uh, the young guys, you know, the guys in the first three, four matches, I mean, uh, and we didn't get paid hardly yeah. anything. Wow. You wouldn't get I'd paid. Get, I, I've read a lot about Tony Santos. He was, he, was, get, what, he was kind of an underground guy, too, wasn't he? I mean, kind of a mafia type guy. What? No, he was hooked up with, uh, uh, what was his name? Yeah. Jack Pfeffer. Jack Pfeffer, Jack yeah. Pfeffer. I worked for Jack Pfeffer. He was promoting. He, he, uh, he, 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 he gave you uh, he gave you the name, right? Uh, Gigi Rogers or something like that. G, that's it. Ah, <laughs> Gigi Rogers. That's I, I right. told I told you we did research on you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are good detectives. <laughs> hey, hey, Ronnie, real quick, is there any way to set the phone on something so just so it doesn't move around so much? That way we get All a better right. view. Let me see. Sorry, John, get, John gets queasy, he gets motion. No, no. He's, he's, he's a Texan. Is he? <laughs> God bless Texas. Yeah. I, I love that state. Me too. Mr. Briscoe does too. No, I don't. <laughs> How's that? That's, That's pretty better. good. All right. I'll try not to move. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Pfeffer. Jack Pfeffer was a gimmick, I'm telling you. Anyway, Santos would pay me $55 a week. I wrestled six nights. Wow. But the office would give us the rides for free. We had a van. Now and we've lost uh, your face. Yeah, I need to, sorry, Ronnie, you need to tilt the camera up just a little bit. Which one? This right? There you go. That's perfect, right there. Okay. And, uh, yeah, 55 bucks a week. My room was 25 a week. Uh, Boston was expensive, so I was living on thirty dollars. Uh, but I didn't have no tr transportation to pay. You know, the rides was furnished, and uh, the trips weren't very long. The longest one I think was uh, Springfield, a hundred miles. Yeah. It was all around uh, uh, Boston, and uh, but still, it was almost start. I ate a lot of hot dogs and hamburgers and bologna. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of bologna. And, yeah, uh, a lot, a lot of changes were coming to the business during that time with with Santos and and uh, you know the territories were changing around and uh, and the NWA I guess was getting formed at that or right after that or right before that something like that and uh, that's where Pfeffer. Uh, what was Pfeffer and Santos's relationship? Pfeffer, Pfeffer was using his talent when he booked me. When he Pfeffer's the one that gave me the name Gigi Rogers. Right. 
because I he booked me. We got fifty dollars to go all the way to Akron, Ohio, from Boston, wow. huh. and six in the car. Six wow. of us. He had the girls in the car, and he had six. us, and he was in the car himself. That was a long ass ride. It was I forgot how many miles. Akron's a long. Now, way this, this is Fe- this is Pfeffer. Pfeffer, yeah. Uh, I, 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 met, I met him one time, Ronnie. There's one thing I remember about him, and, and you, you can verify that. His his little pinky finger, his, his, oh, little, his fingernail jaw was like that long. You know why it was oh, that yeah. long? So he yeah. could pick his nose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, was, he, he, he was a nasty sub. <laughs> yeah, he was. He, 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 he spit out the side of his mouth. Poop, poop like that, and they could dig it, dig it, yeah. dig a big long finger that were right up his nose there. <laughs> yeah, and he picked me out of the guys in uh, in uh, in Boston, the the other young guys. I can't remember their name, and it was three or four of them. They were about my age, I guess, learning, you know. And uh, he picked me and one of them, and uh, this other guy. He was a black guy, and he was about oh, very short. He was a gal of a worker, and he booked me with him. And we had a hell of a match. But before I went into the ring, he made me wear this jacket. He had a jacket for me. You strut, strut, you son of a bitch. He says, you just walk and strut. Buddy Rogers was over back then. Yeah. And I had blonde hair, you know. So he was, he, he was just a trip. So anyway, I strutted, you know. And uh, I worked, we went to Akron probably five or six different times. And uh, that first time was I working with that, that uh, what was his name? It was like the, the guy from Memphis. Remember the, the black guy from Memphis? He worked for WWF with the bird. Oh, Kobe oh, Ware. Oh, oh, Kobe oh, Ware. Kobe Ware. He reminded me of him, you know, and he was a good worker. Yeah, and he was a great we, worker, yeah. We'd bust our ass, man, and then ride all the way home. You talk about a long ride. Yeah. And Santos would... Uh, would pay me. It was fifty yeah. bucks. Wow! So, yeah. so, so, Ron, Ronnie, uh, the, the the reason you're out there, the reason you got that 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 Gigi Rogers, a buddy, like you say, buddy was hot. The NWA was going yep. through a lot of political stuff at the time. So, so that that was kind of there were there were Bobo or Hobo Roger or Hobo Brazil. And, Hobo and, Brazil. That's who it was. The guy, uh, the black guy, Hobo okay. Brazil. Yeah, because we'd stop sometimes in restaurants to yeah. eat something or somewhere. Somebody would look at us, you know, and, and uh, somebody would say we're wrestlers, you know, and they'd look at the at Bo at <laughs> Bobo Brazil, and Bobo the real Bobo was like six six. Yeah, real <laughs> this Bobo. This guy here is about five six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord! So did it you guys a... get any heat anywhere from using those names, or no. they, it just kind of it's Jack Pepper no. guys, and we accept it so. No, nah, no, nobody ever said anything. But you know, we just well, Santos, R- Ronnie, always... you're you're slowly sinking out of the picture there. I don't know if it's you sinking or if, there you go. Um, okay, just the hair more, hair more. Yes, sir. That's perfect. Right. <laughs> perfect. I should have known. I would have got a some kind of way to hold that phone. That's okay. Uh, Let me know when I screw up. <laughs> uh, well, we will believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it would. Hey, be Ronnie, why why Akron, Ohio? That seems strange. Be going out of Boston all the way to Akron. Was there some hookup that uh, either Pfeffer or Santos? Pfeffer Walter Moore was the promoter, and so Pfeffer was producing the talent, and through uh, uh, what's his name Santos, so that's how he get his talent. John, if you'll remember, you ever heard remember, of Walter Moore? He was a big time. Yeah, promoter. I remember Walter Moore. I, if we when we we did a show one time on the Boston wrestling, we I, on on a, when we did the True Job, the the uh, True Job with George Gorgeous George and, yeah. and Don Eagle there, and and uh, yeah. in Indianapolis, I believe it was, or or Chicago, wherever wherever that was. That was all part of that. At uh, Buddy Rogers, you know, that didn't want to lose the title or something like that. So that's when they started. Everybody started coming up with a carbon coffee of Buddy Rogers. Pepper was oh, like, yeah. It was all a political thing uh, back, back yeah. in those days. And then oh. they, they were supplying talent. The only way the uh, Pfeffer's grew, because I've read Al Hat or a Half or whatever. What, what was a Half or the other guy? One of the, one of those guys, the only way they could get talent was through, uh, was through the outlaw guys. And Pepper yeah. was through yeah. the outlaws. Yeah. Well, Pfeffer, 
name one of the, I can't remember what was his name, but uh, I ran into him two or three times. Yeah, he was uh, uh, Bummy Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they call him Bummy Rogers. Yeah. And did, he, he did was a crowd, young guy too. Did the crowd expect the real Buddy Rogers when this was happening or did, did they care? They were just watching wrestling and. It didn't seem like they care, but we didn't draw that big, you know. Uh, and yet nobody ever. I don't remember anyway. It's so fucking it's so so long ago, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I remember Bummy Rogers. There was a, uh, and he called me. Uh, um, uh, let me think. When I first went, he called me. JJ, uh, were you JJ? No, that was uh, Richard. Because it was Richard. a hockey player, Maurice Richard from <laughs> Montreal, that was over like hell in those years, uh, you know. And he was popular <laughs> because in Boston they watch a lot of hockey. Uh, so Golden Boy Richard, that's what I was. Okay, I had yeah. blonde hair, Golden Boy Richard. Uh, yeah. Wow. And then I, I teamed up with this other guy, Golden Boy Dupre. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. He, he was an older guy. He was probably in his thirties. Is that one of the Dupre from Newfoundland? The one now? One of the Newfie guys, one of the Newfie, uh, Newfoundland uh, 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 guys. No, he, he was from around Boston. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he was Golden Boy Dupree, and he was a good worker. And he was about 35 years old, maybe, at the time. I teamed up with him a few times, but yeah, he yeah. give me the name Golden Boy Richard. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was uh, uh, Tony Santos. Tony Him Santos. and Pfeffer, they'd come up with names, man. It was yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they did they have any? Them. Did they have any TV to support their company, or these days all ran no. houses? Just just the houses. Yeah, yeah. We go to Lynn, which was six miles out of Boston, and then we go north Attleboro. That was about a fifty mile trip, and uh, oh, it's, it was easy as far as traveling, but there was no, no money. But you know, you got to you got to start somewhere. And yeah. I knew yeah. what was going on. I said, if I go home in Montreal, you know, where the hell do I go from there? Right. So I, I toughed it out for about almost a year. Yeah. That that, yeah. that, that, that same story like, like, like with Pat Patterson, you know, he, he wouldn't make any money. And, you know, and he got, uh, I guess, his, uh, LaShawn got him booked out west. So yeah. he, went, he went out there without a dime in his pocket, you know, and didn't know anybody or anything like that. And then made yeah. it out there of course so how long did you stay there in the boston area and, and when and where and how did you get out of that place about i was there probably eight months mm -hmm. you know it was long eight months but you were uh, working every night and and and, and getting that experience yeah we were working six nights a week you know and there were no trips sometimes we left at 5 30 4 o'clock you know there was 50 50 miles away it was, it was, that part was okay, but there was no money there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been fun. But, you know, I knew. Where, I knew where and how fun. did you get out of Boston? How did I get out of Boston? That's when I went to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. That's a, that's a big divergence <laughs> from Boston. Yeah. Yeah, Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, Why Little Rock? It wasn't a territory there, was it? No. Uh, well, that was uh, when uh, somebody booked uh, booked me in Oklahoma for Leroy McGurk. Yeah, I sent him a picture. I, I couldn't speak English either. <laughs> That's a serious. Yeah, I, I I came across the border, man. I I knew ten words and they were all bad. I couldn't use them. <laughs> Some woman would have slapped my face back then, <laughs> you know, because they were all bad words. Uh, and uh, it was a it was an adventure. Uh, and uh, I went and got me some. Uh, eight by ten picture made, and uh, of course I've been wrestling maybe eight months, six months, and and I uh, I wrote uh, Leroy uh, a uh, letter, and uh, obviously he understood it. I did, for some uh, reason I could write English and understand English before I could communicate, talk. You know, it was easier. You know, I picked it up, and uh, he gave me a starting date, Little Rock, Arkansas. He was promoting there. I think in the Joplin, Missouri, and uh, all around there. Yeah, now, this, is, this is the mid '60s, right? This is what mid '60s by then. Yeah, like six, sixty-five, uh, sixty-seven, sixty-six, 65, somewhere along. Sixty-five, there. sixty-five, sixty-six, uh, something like that. Uh, yeah, and uh, 
That's how I got booked, and I went out there. That's how I got to wrestle your your brother. Okay, John, this is a great story, and I think I've told you this story before. Ronnie, Ronnie kind of filled, filled John in on, on the details. So you're getting ready to leave Oklahoma, right? And and, and yeah. they, they bring Jack and this young young college guy in. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the talk and, and what, what was going on. Yeah, well, back then, you know, the, if you just started the business, they didn't keep you long. You know, and Leroy asked me, he says, I got as a matter of fact, he, he got me booked in, in Houston. You know, that was nice of him because uh, what's his name in Boston? Man, you were a slave, you know. And uh, so he says, I like your work, and blah, blah, blah. And he says, uh, uh, I'll book you and I'll get you booked in Houston. That was 63, 1963. Farm, I'm, I might be mixed up. But yeah, and uh, that's how I got to wrestle your brother. Yeah, well, well, Jackson, Jack started in 65, so that, that match was Okay, well, that would have been 65. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> what happened is... Uh, what, is the phone there, okay? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now it is, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, they called me in, and uh, they asked me if I wanted to wrestle uh, this guy. Was, you know, college guy, collegiate, you know. I think he had one again. I think it was over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his, his eligibility was over and he had started. He had only been training about a month at that time, I guess. Yeah. O anyway, over he, over he, in Tulsa at the Kane Ballroom. Yeah. But he, he was uh, he was famous there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody knew him. You yeah. know, and I, I didn't follow amateur wrestling. Yeah. You know, and I didn't, especially collegiate wrestling. Yeah. I got kicked out of school in the ninth grade, you know, never went back. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get so, kicked out of school for? Oh, man, we had a teacher. They were brothers, and there was a couple of civilian uh, teachers. Well, there was one with a blue suit. Always wore a nice blue suit. And, uh, oh, we hated him. Me and my buddy, <laughs> well, I had a friend of mine. We didn't, we couldn't stand him. And uh, one day, it came to a, a boiling point, I guess. We He had his suit hung, and we had a loop, and we put holes in his suit. <laughs> you know. And... Uh, I, he knew it was us. He didn't see us. Nobody saw us. But he just knew deep down, you know. And he got so mad that we was in the class. And he got up and he said, okay. He says, come on. You guys want to have a fight? I'll take you on. I'll... So me and, my, me and my buddy stood up. He went out the door and went to the principal. <laughs> <laughs> so I got he immediately kicked out of there. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. That was pretty quick. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we're... so so you're in Oklahoma, and Leroy said, "Do you want to wrestle this guy from college?" You yeah, had no, no. you had no no clue about on the. Uh, no, well, the, it, it was him. it was Jack. It was Jack's first public appearance, I believe. Uh, yep, a... and it was on TV in Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah. We were going to go down to Oklahoma City and have a match, and he wanted it amateur rules, you know, because he said they told they they didn't want him. To, well, he didn't know anything about amateur. I mean, uh, professional right. wrestling. They, he was an amateur wrestler. They wanted a, a amateur match. The so same Ronnie, right, right. he, he won the national title in March, and I think in uh, April. I think in April they gave him his first match. Hmm. That was the that was the one with him. That was the one with you, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He had one, and anyway, <laughs> I didn't know any of that. You know. So he came down to the gym and we did some amateur wrestling, you know, arm drag, you know, and stuff like that, go behind. And uh, anyway, we would go down to Oklahoma City, you know, tell them to work. Well, it's easy to tell somebody to work, but, yeah. you know, so I get down there and when I got in the ring, man, he was looking at me and I said, holy shit, man. <laughs> I mean, it looked like he was ready to kill somebody. You know, he had his eyes looking at me, man. And I said, he done forgot everything. You know, <laughs> I'm okay. A little bit yeah, more. A little more. A little more. A little more. All right. Hair more. There you go. Perfect. Right. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So anyway, we have done a few show, arm drags and uh, sit out stuff like that. And anyway, well, it was well, a what, what, was he was he stiff, Ronnie? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh well, yeah. He was, he was not terribly <laughs> stiff, but he was, you know. Yeah, he, he he was snug, yeah. you know. Well, I imagine, you know, you can't transfer, you know, overnight. Yeah. You know, you shoot, man, and then, you know, 
anyway, <laughs> I, I blew up in about three, four minutes, you know, I mean, totally. And uh, he was going to, he had a pin, some kind of hole in that. It was a pin hole. I think he used it a lot, whatever it was, pinning guys. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, but I know it was a pin, but I was supposed to sit out on him. So I tried to sit out, and man, he won't let me sit out. <laughs> you, know, you know, I can't talk to him. He's behind me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so I did it about three times, two times, man. I'm blowing up so bad. And finally, I said, shit, man, I'm going to give it everything I got. So, man, I finally got out. Did a sit out on him, and I caught him on an elbow, split his eye wide open. He never even sold. I don't think he knew he was he was hit. He pinned me, man, and I got up and straightened his eyes, and that's when the blood was running down. <laughs> anyway, he went to the dressing room, and I went to mine back then. It was separate. I never right. saw him again. Yeah. But I never forgot that. You know, it was an accident. You know, he didn't. Just, he oh. didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, uh, about five years later, whatever it was, seventy, sixty-five. When he was in Florida, and man, right, four, right around seventy. Yeah, yeah. Four or five years later, you know, uh, I go down to work in Florida. Well, my first night in, I'm booked with with your brother. <laughs> it's either Lauderdale or Miami. And uh, they were pushing him big time. <laughs> and he, uh, the, the referee comes in the room, says, Jack Briscoe has a message. I owe you one, MF. <laughs> and he leaves. And I go, huh, well, payback sometimes comes back, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know him because I never talked to him after. Anyway, I go in the ring. And, uh, man, we had a hell of a match. I couldn't believe it. You know, we had a great match. We won a good 20, 25 minutes, and I couldn't believe it. You know, <laughs> and I, I used to tape my tongue and hit the guy in the throat, you know. And uh, so, anyway, I got him in a headlock, and I'm beating up on him. And you disappeared again, Ronnie. <laughs> How's that? Further down. Hold on. Go on. A little bit more. All right. There you go. Yeah, sorry about that. That's all right. Anyway, I get him in a headlock and I hit him in the throat, you know, with my thumb. And he grabbed both of his hands around his throat, you know, selling. And he fell forward and he hit his other eye on my knee and busted it. <laughs> <laughs> so you busted him open again. <laughs> yeah, on the other eye. <laughs> and then after that, when I ran into him, how are you too, MF? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man, that was funny. But uh, you know, and I never worked with him again. Wow, never worked, never ran it. Well, I ran into him a few times. Well, hell, you blinded him in both eyes. I, I can't see why he didn't. But oh, that was funny. Jeez, well, I, I guess, I guess when he went back to college, <laughs> he yeah. Well, let, let me. You, you probably didn't hear that, but. Yeah, Jack was still in college. He was finishing up his last semester there at Oklahoma State. So he went back. Of course, everybody at school, because everybody knew Jack was going to Oklahoma City to be on TV. Yeah. So when he got back to school, of course, he went straight to the to the athletic dormitory and you know, to show off his eye. You know, you think wrestling's fake? Look at this. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you you helped convince all of his buddies that that you know <laughs> nobody had ever busted Jack open, and Jack was in fights all the time. You know. So yeah. <laughs> you were the, you were the first guy there. So all his friends and they they feared you after that, man. They. And some of them still know your name today, Roddy. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you made it. And it was in the school newspaper, a picture of Jack Buster. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, I was leaving. I left after that, you know. And I, I, I just saw him five years later. Yeah. So, Roddy, Jack, Jack goes through the entire NCAA tournament and doesn't give up one point, doesn't get taken down one time, one match with you, and he's blind. <laughs> After reading these hands of song, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. But every time I run into him, I owe you two. <laughs> so how long did you how long did you stay in Oklahoma for Leroy? Not very long. He said, well, because he told me he says the underneath card uh uh 
I like to move them, you know, because I didn't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, experience. And he said, I got your book in, uh, in Houston. So I went to Houston and uh, it was the same thing. I was there short period. Well, that's when Kennedy got killed. Was it? So I yeah, was 63. I, I was 63. 63. Uh, when Kennedy I don't got know. killed, right? Well, Jack didn't wrestle until 65. So we got our dates backwards here somehow. That don't oh, matter. Huh? So who, who who did you run? Who did you who did you maim in, in Houston? Wahoo or who who did you beat up now? <laughs> and no, run I, didn't. I didn't maim anybody. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. uh, you know, it was it was a great experience, but I, so good, who was who who was the talent in Houston when you got down there, Ron? Uh, Louis Tillet, Louis, uh, Terry Garvin. I think Pat Patterson was there. You remember Louis Tillette? Oh, I remember Louis well as Booker here in Florida. Tremendous, yeah, yeah, tremendous yeah, Booker yeah. here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so did you? Yeah. Was was Paul Bosch promoting at the time, or yeah. was it? Oh uh, 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 no, no, Siegel. that was Siegel. Uh, the, old, the original. Uh, what was his name? Hey, Morris Siegel. Morris Siegel. Yeah, oh. that's who was the promoter. Morris Siegel. Yeah. And from there, uh, when I left there, I went to Louisiana. Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah. And was that Leroy and that... Network also in Louisiana? And, and Ronnie, sorry, can we put it in your, your fingers are a little bit over the camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, we keep trying to get you in view. And, and the camera down a little bit. Down this way? Yep, yeah. keep going. A little bit more. Okay. Little Perfect. Bit more. There you go. Okay, I'd like to put something to Okay, you got a book? You got a book there close by? You can throw a book on there? Ah, oh. uh, shoot. Hang on. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to work? <laughs> no. How's that? We got the water bottle. <laughs> I good view of the water bottle. <laughs> ah, jeez. <laughs> Angle. We got the top of your head now. Okay, this way. That's it. Yeah, there you go. All right, let me see. That's perfect. That's perfect there. So, so Louisiana, that's Leroy's territory again, right? Uh, just three Fort and Monroe. Yeah. You know, but I was in uh, in uh, Lafayette. There was a yeah. promoter there. I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, Pinky, 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 somebody, Pinky. Uh, no, I, I think, no. I can't remember. I thought I was, uh, was it Fuller's? Who? Fuller? I think the, the, uh, the guys that own, uh, uh, Alabama, they're the, Jack the, Colton, Jack, Jack Colton. Colton or Colter or something like that. I believe it was he on Mississippi? They were they, they promoted Mississippi and Alabama too, right? Yeah, but even eventually they sold the territory to the Field Brothers. Yeah, in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so anyway, you were you were there, and and who 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 was the two? Was some of the other talent? Was Hodge coming in and out there, or what? Uh, no, in Louisiana, no. There was the French guy from Quebec. Uh, what was his name? Balajon. Balajon. Big, tall guy, strong yeah. guy. Yeah. He was a strong man. Yeah, he was there. Hey, Ronnie, during all this time, you know, Pat. Pat's now in, in San Fran uh, with Roy Shire, you know, making a pretty good name for himself out there. Uh, did you ever think about going out where Pat was? Did you ever have any contact with Pat? I know this is way before cell phones and pen pals and conversations over phone, but did, did you have any contact with him and think about going out there maybe? No, no, I never, no, Pat and I never, only when he uh, came east. I ran into him a few times uh, in Boston. Uh, he came back once or twice, but he was just passing through. And then I ran into him in Montreal. Uh, one summer I went up there to wrestle and he was up there. But no, he had his old career in California. You know, I wish I would have went because I probably would have done pretty damn good. But he was partners only with uh, Ray. Who was the guy Ray. Ray Stevens. Ray Stevens, yeah, Ray Stevens. 
So no, I was not I'm not around the pad very much. I just didn't know because y'all came, both came from the same place, trained at the same place. I know you're, uh, you know, several years apart. But I just didn't know if you, you, you had run into him some during the time before you both make it, end up making it really big. No, no, we didn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't, I, I didn't know uh, much about him in California. Well, back then, you know, you didn't have the technology. Of today. Yeah, you had, you had nothing yeah. except the magazines and the guy yeah. very, very yeah. rarely saw the magazines. Yeah, that was the only way you could uh, find out where they were. Yeah, and then when I first uh, I teamed up with Terry Garvin, uh, in in uh, that was in uh, Alabama. There, what's that town? The main town? <laughs> Mobile, Mobile, Mo Mobile, Mobile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a good territory. That place. So did did you did you know Terry uh, from Montreal or did? Yeah, did you, he uh, he was uh, he was about eight or ten blocks away. It was all yeah. the, it was wow. all in the East Montreal. Uh, you know, yeah. And Terry was wrestling way before Pat. So my mom had taken me to a wrestling match where Terry, there was three blondes. They had three, he, they, he had two partners, three blondes. And they were over like hell in Montreal. Is that when you changed your name to Garvin? Yeah, yeah. Well, I ran into him and, uh, and uh, I don't know how it started, but he said, you, you want to team up? And we did good because we came in the South, man, in the wintertime. And I remember coming down to uh, Tampa in the wintertime because, see, Terry was from Ontario originally, ran through Ontario. You ever heard the name Larry Kazabowski? No. Kazabowski had, had a promotion in North Bay, Ontario. Oh, that was it was like heaven up there. The hunting was unreal. The fishing was unreal. The territory would run from the 1st of May till the last day of October because they couldn't get the arenas because of hockey. All the hockey, they were taken. They were rented, you know. People are crazy about hockey up there. Right. So you couldn't wrestle. You wouldn't have any, uh, like, you know, buildings except for the, uh, the, the hockey arenas. Well, so Larry would run 1st till the, the, the end of uh, October. That was a good territory. Maurice Vachon went, went there ahead of us, and uh, him and his brother, and uh, they had all kinds of talent go up there. Uh, Funk uh, Senior was real, real over in 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 Norby, Ontario, and Terry. Uh, I, I didn't know that Funk was up there too. Huh? I didn't know that. Yeah, so Terry, him and Larry Kazabowski were very good friends, and uh, Terry says. Why don't we go there and spend a summer? We'll do all right. And it, and it's nice. You're right on the lake. And the, the trips weren't, weren't too bad, except for about one or two, one night. Uh, I think it was Sault Ste. Marie was the longest trip. So we went there. And we wound up staying there from uh, all the way to 69. We stayed there in the summer. And we'd leave. And that's how I got to, one winter would go to North Carolina. The next winter would go to Florida. And we'd recruit some guys, and we that to to bring him to the to the territory. Right. And uh, the last two years we were there, Larry Kazabowski just gave us fifty percent of the territory, no papers, no nothing, just you know to book the territory and and bring some talent. Because Larry was getting old, and he lived on a farm, and uh, that's why we stayed so long. Yeah, you know, and we got uh, what's his name. Uh, Frankie Kane came up there. Frankie. He did real good. Frankie Kane could get some heat. Yeah, we Frank was was he Mephisto then? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He was wrestling. Yeah, yeah that, that guy knew how to get heat, didn't he? Frankie oh, Frank was a hell of a oh, worker. Hell yeah, very good. So we and uh, I can't remember all the other guys that came up there, but yeah, we did that, and then uh, after that, that's when Terry and I split up. Yeah. Terry went one way, I went the other. Now I, I I ran across you not only here in Florida just briefly, but in Carolina you were in Carolina there. Is that how you got to Carolina back and forth? You because you 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 never yep. stayed there a long time until uh, later on in your career, right? Yeah, yeah. We we'd come down for the winter. Yeah, you know, winter time and uh, between Carolina and you know was was the winters weren't bad in the Carolinas like it was in Canada. <laughs> That's uh, why I never went north, Minnesota, places like that. New York and all of this. 
I, I didn't want to go up there. So basically you're, you're following the sun and the hunting and fishing is what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't hunt very much anymore, but uh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I did my share. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, Ronald, what are you, you're always an innovator in the business. I know well, one thing that you picked up that everybody kind of picked up on a little bit later on. This comes a little bit later on that we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit. But the Garvin stomp, I mean, that, 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 that's, a, that's a, something that a lot of guys, especially down here in the South, were doing. We do, how did that come about? I mean, everybody was stomping, doing, uh, hit, hitting the stop. You well, know. You, know, you know, I didn't want to copy nobody. It was a, a lot of guys, well, it's, you have to at certain times. Yeah. Some moves are the same and all of that. But, you know, I think if you do something that's different totally, you stick with it and do it right, you know, do it believable. And one day I worked with uh, uh, Malenko uh, and when I was in uh, in Tennessee. He was a big heel there. And one of them, to me, he's one of the best heels yeah, I ever Malenko worked Malenko was, yeah. You can beat him every night. My God, he fights to get out of the ring, you know. <laughs> oh, I love to work with the guy. Oh man, he liked to work with me, and I, <laughs> I like to work with him. It, it was he, just... he liked that rugged style. I mean, he he was he was oh yeah, he was yeah. he would go at it. That's a... yeah, yeah. He he was uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think he got his dues as far as being recognized. As you hardly ever hear his name, you know. No, so except they... uh, except here in Florida, you know, he he's a legend yeah. in Florida, yeah. of course, but. Uh, you're right. You're right for nationally, just like Frankie Kane. You mentioned Frankie's oh, another yeah. one of those guys that was yeah. a tremendous worker that really don't get the accolade that he should be getting. Yeah. So that's how one night he did the stomp on me, uh -huh. but he did it different. He stomped my chest, you know, stomped my chest, and uh, later on I thought about that, you know, because he was not around. I wouldn't have done it if he would have been around. And I said, I'm going to try it. So I experimented. I stomped the chest, stomped the face. I told the guy to turn his face, you know, put him in. You know, you don't want to break the nose. Yeah. And uh, so I stomped on their leg, their stomach, their feet, all the way around. The boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. You know, <laughs> it, was, it stood out, you know. <laughs> so. You know, the anyway. only guy that's done that since, Ronnie, has been uh, Bob Orton's kid, Randy. I don't know if you ever yeah, seen I've Randy heard about do it. That. Randy and I always do commentary. I've done commentary for no telling how many of Randy's matches, and, and I'd, I'd always call it the Garvin Stomp. I always just it was so great when he'd break it out. It was you know Randy yeah. was slow and methodical with it. He did. He's yeah. the only one I've ever seen do anything similar to what you did that that that, that really yeah. got over. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. You know that was great. You know, so I saw that one time. Somebody told me uh, uh, somebody's using your stomp. <laughs> well, not only use it, but I, but I, I called, I, I would call it the Garvin stomp every yeah, time he did yeah. it. The Garvin stomp. Yeah, yeah. Was he doing it the same way, going around the body? Yeah, the but he, he he did it counterclockwise. You did it clockwise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he a little bit different, you know. <laughs> yeah, you do. You were you were doing something too at the time, which was just unheard of. And I tried it one time, and never broke my damn neck. So I cussed <laughs> you out for all, all the whole time. Where you did the sunset flip from the top rope? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that you know, just that that it, it was very difficult to do. I got a, a hell of a lot of respect because you you never got hurt on it. First time I tried it, and only time I tried it, I, I hit my <laughs> neck on the way down, man. I, oh, I, I thought I, I thought I was paralyzed, but I just well, I just went numb, you know. Yeah. How, how the numbers come to your fingers? I did did roll my head at the right time. <laughs> And I no more no more garbage stuff for me. <laughs> That's above my pay grade here. <laughs> uh, I've been very fortunate, man. I tell you, you know, I work with a lot there, of good there, guys. There are a lot of Garvins in, in the business. They all come from either you or Terry. Uh, but Jimmy Garvin, uh, it is your stepson, right? To end up becoming yeah. had yeah, a well, I, I run in Dallas, becoming you know with the fabulous Freebirds and oh yeah. Commercial pilot like you are taking after you, so, yeah. so when Jimmy was breaking in, was that something? Did you want Jimmy to use the name? Was that is there, is there anything no? I ter Terry and I had split up. I, I think I was in uh, I can't remember. I think I was in North Carolina, and Terry went. They went somewhere. I think it was Tennessee, 
for uh, Nick Goulas. I think that's what it was. Yeah, they uh, Jimmy Jimmy teamed up with Terry, and then uh, he was like the valet at first. That's what it was, and he, he would manage him. And I guess that's where later on, where Jimmy got the idea of having Precious manage. You know, they would get some heat with that. We went to Montreal and wrestled the Rougeau brothers. Holy shit, we broke every record up there. Huh. It was unbelievable. They, they, they sold out the Montreal Forum. Supposedly, that was according to the newspaper, that it was the largest crowd ever, ever. It's like Madison Square Garden, you know. Right. And uh, the Rougeaus against the guard. And I was up there on vacation, and uh, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I've never seen anything get over like that in my life. That Montreal but, territory at times was really hot, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, very hot. <laughs> Well, I was going on vacation, and I called Gino Bravo or Gino, Gino Brito, one of the two. They were promoting Montreal. And uh, I said, hey, I'd like to get two or three bookings. I can deduct my trip or my taxes. And they said, oh, okay, okay, we'll, we'll book you. I said, no more than one day a, da a week, two at the most, you know, because I, I left Montreal when I was 15 years old, you know, and, and my parents, man, I, they didn't see me very often. So I wanted to go visit uh, – uh, my parents, you know, for the summer, at least a month, and uh, which I did. And when I got to Montreal, uh, they called me and wanted me to come to the office. Well, I didn't know that Jimmy was in Minnesota, <laughs> and he was he wanted a couple of bookings because he was in North Bay, Ontario, which is only 300 miles away or something like that, and his wife was from there. So he was going to be with the in-laws, and at the same time, pick up a couple of shots a week. So they had an idea, I guess, Gino Brito and Gino Bravo to work an angle. Well, I didn't know anything about it till I walked in there and there's Jimmy and Joe, wow, what are you doing here? <laughs> anyway, then they said, hey, we're going to make some money with this. And, you know, the usual, you got to work your ass off when you work an angle and sometimes they don't get over, you know, not always getting over. So we're supposed to go to, the, the the Montreal Forum and do the angle, you know. We got uh, Precious as the manager. She sprays their eyes with the spray, and we beat the shit. We knocked the hell out of them, and finally, the, the their dad was over like hell in Canada. It was like Hulk Hogan. He's sitting at ringside. Well, he comes to the help his kids, and he slides under the bottom rope, and I'm on the top rope, and I come off with a knee drop. Well, he's laying there. You know, so the Rougeaus, it's like a bomb went off, you know. The bodies of Rougeaus is all, all over the place. And we're stomping the shit out of them. And we had a hard time getting out of there. And uh, anyway, the angle caught on so much that it's just everywhere we went. The whole province, all all of Quebec. That was Salah. It was just, I couldn't believe it. It got over so good. And I got videos of it. That was and I don't know why it clicked so good. They just, I guess, they were liked a lot, you know, because both of them, their uncle and their dad, were the, one of the biggest names in, in Quebec, yeah. you know, at one time. So, anyway. <laughs> that's, well, they, uh, they, they were a historic family, like you said, but you and Jimmy brought you brought that, that, that solid wrestling uh, with them. Oh, the match was, it, it was believable. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. And that, that's what sells in Montreal too. Oh yeah, it was believable. Yeah, yeah. But, so, you, uh, so you head you head down. Uh, take us to to the to the to you head down uh, to Fuller uh, to uh, Pensacola and Knoxville and what what was that golf, golf coast wrestling right? Yeah, golf coast wrestling. Yeah. Everything that we, everybody we've ever interviewed said that was one of the greatest territories people ever worked because the trips were just right and the, the oh yeah talent, the, the talent the talent was top class talent and the, and the, and and of course Ron 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 paid uh, like a like a like a like he should yeah oh yeah the, the trips were great and uh, the money was decent you know and the, I liked the South you know I fell in love with the South man and like Louisiana I love Louisiana. I got to go alligator hunting, and I was doing all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit in between wrestling and. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, one, 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 I remember when I, when I started to go to Louisiana and, and Mississippi and places like that, everybody carried a fishing pole in their trunk, man. You passed all those oh, yeah. lakes. So that was yeah. pre, pre-interstate days, so you had a lot, a lot, of, a lot of country roads where there were a lot of lakeside along, along the crypts there. Yeah. Yeah. Wrestling's been a good life. I remember my biggest rib I ever pulled on anybody. I, I was partners with Ole Anderson after Gene died. Yeah. Just for on and off, you know, not 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 for a long period. I can't remember a month, month, two months. But we traveled together. I drive. Ole never smoked, never drank. And uh, so anyway, I, I like the guy because you know, to me, he's he's authentic. You know, he, he's there's only one Ole Anderson. Yeah, <laughs> you can't go find another one. <laughs> <laughs> and we got along for some reason. I worked with him one night uh, against him when he was with Gene. I, I, I headbutted him. So he headbutted me. I headbutted him. He headbutted me. It was like four times each, maybe five. My head was rattled and his too. And we both stopped without saying a word. And later <laughs> on, he talked about that. He says, shit. He says, I couldn't believe it. He says, I thought I was going to knock you down. And the man, you'd come right back. Yes, I was knocking myself down too. <laughs> <laughs> we had this contest, but the rib was we're traveling in Florida and uh, where he, he was living into an apartment. It was like uh, the, you had to go in the center. It was very echo at night. I pick him up and uh, anyway, I brought him back. We're, we're leaving uh, Miami. So I watched him. He walked to his house to where the door is for his apartment, you know, and he's a big old guy, you know, and he's, everybody knows him, he's on TV, you know, 260, 70 pound guy, and <laughs> got all these little blonde head kids running around <laughs> during the day. And uh, so anyway, right as he gets to the door, the light comes on. I stood out right next to my car door over my, over to the, the, the window there. And I said, Ole, hello. He's trying to get into his house. I mean, <laughs> man, I got him so good. That was unbelievable. I think he was he was embarrassed to live there after that. <laughs> Some guy called him, I love you in the middle of the night. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I thought he was working with me. He was so into trying to find out who it was. So, mm-hmm. so you you're up 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 in Knoxville area there, and uh, something happens up there, Ronnie. And uh, I, you know, if you'd be kind enough to kind of kind of kind of tell us your your version of the story, Plan B. Oh, Plan B. Well, <laughs> uh, well, Bob Roop was doing the booking, and uh, anyway, we, I, I, I didn't have no no beef, and I was actually I I was wrong doing what I did. Because I, I had a guarantee, you know, and I was doing well, and I, a lot of times, Fuller paid me over the guarantee, you know. But you know what it is, you travel in a car, you know, Bob Orton, Bob Roop, and and uh, uh, some of the guys, and they, they're not happy, you know. They say, ah, they're stealing, and they're doing this, doing that. Well, I, I didn't know about this, if they were stealing f- for sure, you know, the, 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 the spot show, especially the spot show. You know, the smaller towns. Right. You know, there was a woman, uh, a mother and daughter team that was sell the tickets, you know, at the door and all that. And we heard all kinds of stories about that. And uh, so it was uh, with Bob Roop, Bob Orton. Uh, Malenko and Ron Wright. Malenko, Ron Wright, and myself. And uh, I got involved, man. I... I I shouldn't. Have. Hey, what did they, what did they do? Call you and ask you, or just one of those car rides where you have? Well, a couple they of kind beers, of uh, have a couple of beers, and we, well, we that'd be having, good. We started having meetings and stuff, you know, in the apartments, you know, and and so we decided to go opposition. I had the belt, you know, and I was over like hell in Knoxville. I was Mister hey. Knoxville. Hell, shit, man, I could have run for mayor. I would have won. Yes, that was a hell of a gimmick, and. uh so we just decided to go, you know, independent. So we didn't show up one Saturday for TV. And uh, Ron Wright was going to be the front guy, you know. He's going to be the, the promoter. 
well, he wasn't wrestling very much anymore. He was kind of, a, you know, on the way out. And uh, that's what happened. So the plan B was that somehow if we, uh, we exposed the business, that's what it was. We went to a TV station. Ron Wright knew somebody at the TV station. And they videotaped interview. And which on the tapes would tell everybody everything about the wrestling man, the wrestling business. <laughs> everything. Did, 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 what... have, did, have you watched Plan B, the tape? Have you watched that? No, no. I, I, I didn't think you have the way you're talking. I just didn't think you no. no, I No, I never watched it. Uh, well, we, we put two promotions out of business. We went out of business. We lasted about six, six months. Well, we split the crowd, you know. So and, was that targeted just toward the floor? Was was there an alternative motive? Because, you know, there there's some things said about the homosexuality of, of certain guys. Was it was any of it directed no. toward Barnett or anything? No, like they were, that? no, no. Well, Barnett was not involved there. Well, Barnett was, just, was coming in shortly after to take over the territory, though. Well, no, he was furnishing the, 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 the talent. talent. Yeah. yeah, because uh, uh, what's his name? Graham out of Florida. Uh, somehow it had leaked because I find out later that uh, they Graham had warned uh, Fuller something's going on, you know. And there was a stooge that was stooging on us. Was uh, what's the guy? He's a tough guy, supposedly. Play Slater, Dick Slater. Yeah, yeah, Slater. You know, so he uh, he was he 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 was supposed to be with us too, and all of a sudden we didn't see him no more. <laughs> you know, so did you did you guys just cut the one 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 videotape? Yeah, only one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was pretty long, you know, and it was uh, all of us. Yeah. yeah, you know, with lines, you know, and stuff. And, but yeah, but we only uh, wasted a hell of a business, you know. So we split the crowd. They, we went out of business. Well, there was a big territory. We go up to Kentucky yeah. and all over the place, and. Uh, it was good territory and short trips and making yeah. good money too, right? Oh heck yeah, yeah. Did, and I felt I felt bad later. I, I, did did, you know, did uh, Fuller ever talk to you about why you did it or anything? Or did yeah yeah I did a podcast for him. I mean, uh, did they, did they know what they didn't know at the time you guys had cut this thing? Did or how did, how did was it leaked out or do you know anything? Yeah, details? somebody leaked it out because I I, I I I totally forgot about it, and all of a sudden one day somebody talked about that. You know, I don't know who got. I think it was Ron Wright that kept the that, tape. That, that kept the tape all those years. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I think so. What What were you guys gonna? The, the, whoever, like, well, Ron Wright or Bob Roop, whoever it was that was had the tape. W were they planning on using it, or was that just a threat that they hope would never use? I think we were going to use it. You know, we didn't have none to lose. You know, the promotion had more to lose than us. You know, because Fuller was you know that was his business we kind of you know made him lose his business you know we didn't nobody won and i i think that that was the kicker in case he uh he started drawing real big and we couldn't survive we, we, we would take him down with us you know mm -hmm. i i guess <laughs> But I, I did was, a podcast. And then was the him. decision just to not use it because the territories both were, were sinking. So just said, oh, to heck with it. And somehow this yeah. video yeah, well, got we, buried for 20, no, well, 30 well, years. And No, well, what happened is uh, there was a, uh, the Pothos that started a promotion up in Lexington, Kentucky. You know, and they needed talent. So they're the one that came to us. So because we were the talent. And go because Lexington is not that far. I think it was two hundred miles from uh, from Knoxville, something like that. It's not that far. And they were they were going to run, you know, like all the towns in in Kentucky and all around there. And uh, we were going to run uh, Knoxville, and we had the other building, the the older building there. And uh, Ron Wright had a lot of connections as far as he, because he'd been around for so long. Yeah, his, you know, family, was, his family, his brother, he had a brother had been in. Yeah, the, yeah. So we, we put him ahead of it. You know, he was the he was the promoter. But uh, anyway, we uh, got hooked up with the Poffles. And uh, we uh, we met them 
somewhere. I think I think halfway somewhere in the town. And uh, we we was we was there all afternoon. And they wanted the talents anyway. I got twenty percent, and Roop and Orton got ten percent. And there was one more guy, Rip Rogers, I think. I think got five percent. But uh, we got a percentage. We didn't put any money down. You know, we put no money. And uh, to go and you know, if we joined, they they already had a few guys. You know, the Puffles. There's two of them, and then they had uh, Pez Watley. And they probably had seven or eight guys. So I figured, well, hell, that helps, you know. So we teamed up, and then we realized later it didn't take very long for me anyway. Uh, I had never been around people like that. <laughs> so when when was the decision made that you're not going to show this tape, uh, and how how did that decision come about? The tape, yeah, the I, I, tape. when we were with the Puffles, never heard about it. Nobody, no. well, nobody mentioned that tape anymore. Nobody ever mentioned the tape. Wow. Nope. Nobody ever mentioned that thing. And uh, we, we teamed up with them, and the, the Puffles, man, we were in the office. You know, I had 20%. Right. Because I, I, I had the belt, and I was over like hell on all those towns, and the Puffles wanted me. So that's why I got more. I wouldn't have done it for less. Anyway, we were in the office, and Angelo Puffle, every single day, in that office, better rich and dead than poor and alive. And he'd look around and he, you know, we'd look at each other, Bobby, and, and, and we couldn't, couldn't believe it. Better dead, better poor and dead than alive. Well, what I say? Better dead, rich and dead. Better rich and dead than poor and alive. That was the line. <laughs> that was the line every day. Every single day. That was a and, Pablo uh, line, huh? Oh, and then I got to where it got ridiculous. Uh, Randy was paranoid. I think he was paranoid that thought maybe we were going to take over. That guy was totally paranoid all his, every time I've been around him, you know, and uh, I couldn't believe it. He was always, uh, why are you doing that? You know, you, if even if you help him, you know, you pick up something and then you help him hold the door. He's, what are you doing that for? <laughs> Anyway, he worked an angle up there. <laughs> they didn't tell us. <laughs> and he he stole a uh, a T-bone steak in a, in a in a marketplace. <laughs> I went on TV and I exposed him. <laughs> <laughs> he, can you imagine? He was our world champion because we changed the name of the. Uh, oh, what's that? Can you see me? Yeah, we see. You. Uh yeah, he uh, he stole a T-bone steak, put it in his pants, <laughs> <laughs> and went home and got arrested. <laughs> and got arrested. This is Randy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only sane one was Lanny. Lanny, Lanny was funny. Lanny, Lanny was care. funny. Yeah. So he, he so was, he, was, you, was. You 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 exposed a steak in the pants. Or what what happened? On the <laughs> <laughs> was it was it a tube steak? <laughs> no, it was a big T-bone. Yeah, tube steak. I'm sorry, John. I, I, I went low brow on you, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, that that was a trip. You know, uh, we 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 ran there for almost two years, and we even wind up at Rupp Arena. We were doing good. Then they started cutting the pay on the boys, and I didn't like it. And and I told I told Randy. Or I mean, not Randy, but Bob Orton, uh, and and uh, Bob Roop. I said, man, that ain't right. You know, we had T.O. You know, Samoan. I don't know if you know him. T.O. He had his son wrestling with us. Tapu, whatever. And they were good, good heels. And we had Pez Watley. We had some good talent. And uh, are you guys still there? Yeah, yeah we're, we're there. there. We're listening. Oh. oh. And uh, so huh, he, when he started stealing, that's when I said, this is it, man. You know, I'm out of here. And uh, I told him, you know, I said, you can't do that. You know, they worked their ass off to bring it up and it brought up. We it was we drew a decent house. We even went to Rupp Arena, you know, and that's when they cut the pay. Wow. Yeah, they got greedy. Oh, they were so greedy on money. They were just, uh, and the mother was just as bad. 
<laughs> and then you, 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 you're, you're a partner where they trade, trade and you're right on the, on the dividends and on, on the profits or what? No, no, the dividends, everything was out. They just cut the pay of some of the guys, you know, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, of, you know, they, you know, whatever it was, the amount. And come on, geez, these guys are staying with us and, you know, work like a team. So that's how I, I, I just left, you know, Bob Roop left first. And then when I left, I told, uh, uh, I wanted my dividends, about 20%, you know, uh, cause we got dividends every month. We did, we did well. It was, if we would have lasted another year working our ass, you know, and not cutting pay and I think it would have been successful, but you know, there's too many people involved. That's what, that's what happens. I think, you know, somebody screws up or gets greedy and, but uh, I wound up in Atlanta. Bob Roop was down there, and Ole was promoting it. And so it turned out to be a good thing. <laughs> and then during, during the time with the, with Atlanta, that's when you start up, you know, all the different Starcades and all the stuff that was going on. Uh, obviously, famously, you uh, main event at Starcade 87, which was up against the Survivor Series. Did, did you realize what was going on at the time with WWE – uh, no, yes. no, no, I did not. For some reason, uh, that was, the, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to be involved in politics. So I didn't, you know, uh, I was just one of the boys, you know, I just didn't pay attention. You rotate, know? Your, rotate your phone down a little bit, Ronnie. Okay. There you go. How's that? But so you didn't know about the, you know, WWE is getting the national TV contracts or buying up talent. No. To take over. and Nope. Just working. Nope. Yep. I didn't know, man. I was shocked. <laughs> so, How's the, 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 when you were in, uh, where was it, Carolina? Where, is that when they came to you about winning the NWA belt or title? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when I was working for Crockett. Yeah. So yeah. you had left Atlanta at the time. Yeah. yeah so, I so uh, this, this, they're in Atlanta. Roop was there, you like you say, and you guys have just done this deal. Did Barnett know about that Plan B tape, or I always heard he knew about it. Ah, uh, he might have, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I didn't hang around much around the, you know. I just <laughs> that was not. I was not a booker, so hell, shit. I just went about my business. <laughs> but that was a bad thing to do because you know I could have found out a lot of stuff. I was shocked when WWE, you know, because when we went to uh, what was it? When I got the belt in Michigan, that was a pay per view, I think. Was it? So yeah. how how did that happen? I mean, what they? I know they wanted a Flair to be a drop it so they could defend a title against uh, against uh, uh, what was it? Uh, WrestleMania or was it WrestleMania or, or what? Somebody. Oh, uh, he got a car accident. Uh, what's his name? Magnum. Magnum T A. Yeah, well, he was crippled, you know. You got an accident. That's yeah. That's so the, re the, re the original plan was put it on Magnum. Yeah, yeah, and uh, then they decided to do it with me. But uh, so, you know, Ronnie, that, that big Starcade is is so interesting to me because that was you know obviously that was Crockett's big show, and you're going to host it against uh, Flair for the title in '87 on Thanksgiving. And that's when Vince came in and put in Survivor Series yep, opposite yep. you guys and yep. kind of leveraged the pay-per-view provider saying, by the way, if you don't take this, you may not get WrestleMania. And it was a real, you know, war between the two. And all of a sudden you guys are head to head. Uh, was anything mentioned about that backstage about, you know, this is, we've, we've got this guy up North who's r running opposition against us. This is a, a battle that's coming that is going to be a, a hell of a fight. Yeah. Was none no, of that? I didn't, I didn't even know. No, no, nobody ever said a word to me about it. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what was going on with the WWE. Because it was just, just a matter of working and, and as normal and making money. And because Carolina, yeah. Carolina was hot at that time, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the, the whole thing is, I think Dusty screwed up the whole thing. I thought he was working for, for Vance McMahon. When I find out all the shit, so somebody in the organization was working for Vince. And like when I won the bill, it was, we still had a hundred thousand dollar house. 
than money, you know, which is not like having a pay-per-view. Well, why, was, why, why do you think that? What was going on that, that, that led you to think that somebody was, you had to well, in a, in a, in a minute? When you won the world, the title, and, you know, you go around. I didn't go anywhere. I went drop, to drop, drop, drop your camera a little bit, Ronnie. There you How's go. that? That's better. And, what, and, and your hand right there on the land, too. There you go. On, uh, I went to uh, Portland, Oregon one night to defend the title. One night. I was a whole month. I Oh, yeah, I worked with Lex Luger one time, but it was not a title. It was a non-title. And that was the first time in my life that I, a grown man, went full of, <laughs> full of but Crockett called me in the office. He says, my God, what are you doing? He says, he says, Luger tells me you hurt him. He don't want to work with you. I said, what do you mean I hurt him? Because <laughs> I chopped him. <laughs> I said, well, look, look at Flair's chest. Flair's chest was all cut up, man. He would bleed. <laughs> he never complained. <laughs> and no shit. He used to put nails pouring on his chest because it was all raw. <laughs> and he never complained. Well, he worked with Wahoo, too, you know, before. So he, he had a lot of <laughs> experience. Had a lot of chops. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, w I never defended the title. And then when it come time to, uh, to, uh, did you I'd know that, did you know that going in, Ronnie, that, that, uh, I, I read something, like I said, to do a little research, I read somewhere, everybody, everybody was turning it down because they knew it was just a, 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 a short, short, short run. But you said, I, I, hey, I'll take it and I'll make the best out of it. Yeah. And then, then, then when you lose it, usually there's always a rematch. Yeah. You know, and then then you go on your way. You know, but uh, did that, you get any the, rematches out of it? No, wow. no, I didn't. No, that's what I mean. You you know, usually you do. Yeah. But uh, no, I crock it. Uh, when, when you when you here. when you lost it, how were you basically positioned in the territory then? I mean, were you did you still have a top position, or, or did they oh, kind yeah. of drop you down? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was. Hell, we were drawing money, you know. And uh, of all things, you know, when we went, to, when I lost the title, what the hell did we, we didn't have no business in Chicago. We didn't have no business in Chicago. You know, I don't care what anybody say. Yeah, you, you, people couldn't, couldn't care less. You know, the territory, you know who they pissed off? I think it was the fans of North Carolina, Greensboro, right. you know, Georgia. and. Uh, and you know, uh, Charlotte, you know, those were the fans of of the of of that territory of, of Crockett territory, yeah, the rich, yeah. And all that, so, yeah, the... so Dusty wanted grandeur, you know. He wanted to come on. What the hell, you know, the limos and the, the jet and all that shit. That's why the business went belly up. Hell, what they do with a jet and they had two airplanes. Wow, you know. And of course, and, and, and well, like like you mentioned, the Carolina Mid Atlantic Territory was considered always considered one of the top territories in itself. They oh, didn't, they didn't Greensboro, yeah. Greensboro would sell out, man. There's three stories. I mean, three yeah. three levels. You know, we had some great houses in it, and yeah. they insulted the people. Mm -hmm. You know, we we didn't belong anywhere else. Should have stayed in the territory, and WWE would have had a harder time. Yeah. You know. But I, that's why I thought I said, man, somebody's working with. Craig. And when I found out about about Vince McMahon, you know. Well, then at that, when you when you found out about Vince, was that when you decided to to see what it was like, or did Vince reach out to you? How did it end up going about? Because you ended up going to work for uh, Vince and and getting over really big for them as well. But Pat Patterson called me. Pat, well, I went to uh, I went to uh, Puerto Rico. That was after what's his name had got stabbed, Brody. They couldn't get no talent, so I got a hell of a deal, man. They gave me five grand my weekends, and I'd go there for two days. I didn't last long, maybe three, four months, and uh, which was great, you know, good money. I would go over there, boom, right back, and uh, yeah, they had a hard time getting talent over there. And uh, what was the promoter there? Shit, Carlos. Yeah, Carlos. We always got along. I liked him. You know, I let it too. Yeah, he paid me good. You know, he took care of me, and uh, so I kept going. And I heard a couple of guys 
didn't like it because they had boycotted, you know, the boys didn't want to go because of the stabbing. Yeah. And, but I didn't care. I didn't have nothing to do with that, you know. And so anyway, Pat called me. And that's when I went up there. And he says, you're going to like it. And uh, Vince gave me the name of Rugged. <laughs> right. You, you're going to be rugged. <laughs> and then, then Ronnie, that fits you perfectly, too. <laughs> you were rugged, Ronnie Governor. <laughs> yeah. Vince, Vince, to me, I, the guy was a genius, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to business and doing things. Yeah. I, I got along good with him. But, you know, I, I just turned 45 in, in November 1990, and I said, I'm done. You know, I went home. And then, how lucky can you be? I'm telling you, the good Lord directed my life the whole time. I think, because <laughs> I I had about well, I had airplanes. When I went to New York, I flew my own airplanes. Wow! I had a seven passenger four four hundred two four hundred oh one Cessna, and uh, oh, I went to California, I took guys everywhere, you know, and uh, the boys loved it. Yeah, I, I, I love that, but I wouldn't get in that plane with you because yeah, I'll tell you why. You buzzed me one time on Interstate 20, I think. <laughs> in, be, in, be, in between Macon and Savannah or somewhere going down that way. <laughs> me, me and Morocco were in, in that little Mercedes convertible. I had that little blue Mercedes convertible. And, and I think it was you and Jimmy, but you guys buzzed me on the damn Interstate. <laughs> <laughs> How, did, oh, how did you how did you get into flying? It was just you know you tired of well, trips. And... I, I I bought an airplane in 1973, mm -hmm. first time. Well, I got tired of traveling, you know, uh, and I always wanted to fly, but I couldn't afford it. So I I went to uh, Nashville when we were there with Jerry Jarrett. We did real well. Jimmy was there and Terry, and I went teamed up with them. They called me, and uh, we were. Man, if you had Memphis, your week was made. You know, we were in Memphis every every week. Uh, we were doing real well, and uh, I saw this ad about uh, Flight Academy. It was about twenty miles from from uh, Nashville, so I went, and they give you an uh, introduction flight. You know, about thirty minutes. And they let you fly some. You know, hold the, the yoke, and so I did that, and I was hooked. You mm -hmm. know. I knew it because I always wanted to, but I just never had flown. After I flew one time in a little plane, and uh, six months later, I had my license. Wow. Then I bought me a Cessna, four seaters, and it could carry pretty good sized guys. Bought a room in it. Uh, it was a high wing, no struts under Cessna. Uh, very economical, 150 miles an hour and 10 gallons an hour fuel burn. Had all kinds of equipment on it, and then I, from there, I went and got my my uh, instrument rating. But I had three airplanes. I started with a Cessna, and then got one a little faster again, and Piper, and then I got the the the, the four uh, four hundred one Cessna. That was the fastest. Had seven seats. It was comfortable, you know. But uh, yeah, we flew. The boys loved to fly once. Once you start flying, man, we flew even a hundred mile trip, which was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's faster. You <laughs> you get in the car, go direct to the airport. You don't have to take a cab or wait for somebody. Do you still fly now? No, I last time I flew was when I for the company. Uh, I quit flying in two thousand three. I flew cargo. I was sitting in the office trying to sell my airplane, the last one there after I quit WWE. And because uh, I didn't need it anymore, and uh, I was retiring, and but I wanted to fly, I wanted a flying job, and I could have got a couple of jobs, but I had to wear a tie, <laughs> and I didn't want to wear a tie, and I didn't want. I had to make reservations at the hotel. I had to make sure the food was on the airplane, uh, you know, stuff like that. Air, you know, and I said, Nah, that's not for me. So I'm sitting. At the office of this uh, guy sell, that sells an airplane, and this guy walks in, and uh, the guy says to me, he says, "Hey, he's he's starting a company right in uh, in Charlotte, right next to uh, the 
what was the company that was there? Uh, FedEx. We were next to FedEx, and uh, it was cargo, and that was perfect, man. That's what I wanted, you know. You didn't have to wear a tie. You didn't have to, and just two of you in the plane, man, and you know. Didn't have to deal with plane. passengers. Yeah. Didn't have to deal with passengers, just had to deal with boxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, just cargo. Well, 80% of our stuff was uh, car parts. We flew car parts, automobile, and a variety of different things. Like, we we went for a while, almost a whole entire week, flying baby chickens, baby chicks, 40,000, <laughs> 30,000 of them. And we'd take them down to Miami, and some larger airplane would pick them up and take them to South America. We flew we flew dolphins and seals in, during different seasons, south and north, you know, and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. It was very interesting. And uh, but the main thing for me was I was flying DC threes. And if anybody know the the history of DC three airplanes, you know, if it would have been for DC threes, they claim we would have never won. Win, we never we would have never won World War Two. I'm going to test your knowledge here. Which president was it that flew on one engine from one side of the country to the other side of the country on a DC-3? A president? Yeah, a president. I think it was Garfield. Garfield? Maybe. I never read that. Huh. Did, did, did you ever? He, I, he wanted, to, wanted to show the show the public the confidence in the plane. Oh, so, oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, they're slow on one, but uh, well, yeah, I was there 13 years flying cargo, and I lost 33 engines. Wow! <laughs> but well, I, let me let me rephrase that. I, I shut down maybe five, and then the rest they had shut themselves down. They shut, shut themselves down. down. Wow! Well, the one I shut down is because the the, the the oil pressure and the temperature were going up, and and I wanted to save the. the does, does that happen immediately, or just a gradual thing, Ronnie? Well, usually you get a little. You keep watching your your your, your panel, and if you see that what the temperature start coming up, keep an eye on it because something is wrong. You know, it doesn't doesn't stay steady. Temperature and the water, the, pre, uh, the oil pressure. Wow. That's the two things. And when you have no pressure and it's dropping, yeah, well, you you shut them down and uh, you feather the props, because yeah. if you don't feather the props, you can't fly very well because of the the drag that. Uh, the propellers create you can't maintain altitude you lose altitude ah it's it's uh probably the best airplane you can right safely really he, he was right to fly cross country because oh. that airplane there is unbelievable it's like a tank with wings <laughs> <laughs> oh i flew to thunderstorms they'd say you guys got radar we'd say no we got seat belt <laughs> <laughs> Roddy, yeah. you were you were such a big name in wrestling for so long. You were on top everywhere you worked. Did you not think about staying in wrestling as an agent or a booker or any type of promoter or anything? Did did you want to get out in '93 when you got out and not go back, or did did you have that uh, inclination to kind of stay in the business? I probably would have, but that flying man was my life. Oh. I mean, I flew, I put twelve thousand hours in thirteen years. Wow. You wow. Know. Oh, I never turned down a trip, man. I mean, I was flying. And then we got more equipment. We got Falcon 20 jet. We got uh, Convair. We got, we started with two, three airplanes and wind up with a bunch. And the boss, I was flying him and his wife and family when they needed to go places, you know. We became good friends. And, but if I wouldn't have been for that, yeah, I probably would have loved to stay involved with the business, you know. And at one time, I, you know, at the beginning of my flying, I had a car lot. I had a business. I had a guy running it for me, and I had an 800 number, and I'd call him every morning, and he was always there. Best working guy I ever had. <laughs> How long did you have that car lot? Because I know it was a very successful car lot up in Charlotte, right? I, uh, oh, man, that was a good business. <laughs> well, I bought the land. I had the land, the building, and everything. And... Uh, I had it, well, I just sold it last year. Wow. Yeah, but it was, I had, I had it leased, you know. I didn't have much to do with their business, but it was leased. But I had the property. I just got rid of it. But, I, you know, I fell in into such good spots, and I was always, I don't know, 
I, I'm the luckiest man, man. I tell you, I thank the good Lord every day. Uh, one thing about it, Ronnie, I mean, throughout the years, and I've known you forever, it seems like, and you always had that sterling uh, reputation of being a, just an outright good guy, and I can testify to that. You're, you're always up front, always up front with anybody and everybody, and, and, and you got the best out of Ronnie Garvin each night you went to the ring. Well, thank you. I appreciate that compliment. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, you know, I... I I respect a lot of guys, and most of the guys in the business were good guys. There was a few bad apples, just like anywhere else, oh. you know. And the only bad apple I ever experienced was Randy Savage. You know, <laughs> I never had a – yeah, 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 yeah. He, I don't know if you ever heard of what – and uh, him and I had a fight. Well, it didn't last very long. Uh, <laughs> was in uh, in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm booked with the Poffles. And, uh, and Randy, what, what territory? What territory are you work? North for? Carolina, Crockett. North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, been to business all this time. You know, and I never had a problem with anybody. And uh, so we're booked. With, I didn't know the pocket. I don't even know if I had heard their name. You know, this is uh, this is a long time ago. And me and Tiger Conway are partners against the Poffles. Well. We get in the ring, and, man, I, there's a lot of cussing going on. All kinds of, I'm going, what the hell? Well, it's between Conway and the Poffles. Something happened to your phone, Ronnie. What happened? You're sideways again. How's that? No. <laughs> no? A, you're sideways. Tilted, oh, tilted. What, what do you mean sideways? Well, tilted. Tilted it's back. Funny. Screen got turned. Oh, how do, how do you do that? You know how to do that, huh? You turn try, turn the phone. Try turning the phone. Just turn the phone. Oh, turn the phone this? Yeah, there you go. This yeah, there you go. Yeah, awesome. Perfect. Do I look good? Yeah, you <laughs> look great. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, when I'm going, God, man, what's, well, I'm not going to leave Tiger by himself fighting two guys. You know, I don't care who it is. And uh, so, there's a finish. I can't remember what happened, but there's a cussing going on and shoving. And I'm standing there and I'm looking and I'm going, geez, well, they jumped him. When he when he got out of the ring, he went first. And they jumped his ass. Well, hell, shit, man. I went after Lanny because Randy was uh, with, with uh, Tiger. And I went all the way around the ring. <clears throat> Lanny is throwing kicks. And I just keep going at him. He keeps throwing, and he's going backwards. And I kept around the corner of the ring, and here's here's a, a tiger on his back, savage on top of him. Well, there was the post, you know, with the rope around the ring. Well, I put that post in his back, and that ended the whole thing real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that ended the whole thing real quick. And then I got all the blame. What was what was the fight over? Do you recall? What was the final? What? What was the fight over? I mean, what were you guys? I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember Tiger telling me. I don't remember. You might have told me, and I just forgot. But uh, Tiger and I, man, we were partners for quite a while after that. Yeah. You know, and uh, but the but the part Randy already had four to five fights with a couple of English shooters. One of them, one or two of them, he had sucker punch. What's his name? The guy, he was over like hell in Memphis, short guy. Uh, Dundee, Dundee. Dundee, Dundee. Oh. He sucker punched him. And he had sucker punched three or four other people, you know. And uh, I said, well, hell. <laughs> so anyway, that Anything was. Anything happened after the fight? I mean, was there any follow-up by Randy and Lanny about it? Or no. just kind of was it dismissed? No, there was no follow up, but I got all the blame at the office. <laughs> yeah, so I left. Told him to kiss my ass. Uh, what's his name? Uh, they were buddies too. It was uh, uh, shit. He was Booker George Scott. George Scott. Yeah. Yeah, he was a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, but you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah, I remember a lot of stuff. He, oh, I went to the office, so I remember. Uh, I was pissed. Well, they 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 said I started the whole thing. 
you know. I didn't have nothing to do with it to start with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Ron, Ronnie, what, what's up with you now? I, mean, I know tomorrow you're going fishing, and uh, and uh, straighten your phone up a little bit so you so you can. You, you there can you go. Hey, what, what what's up with Ronnie Garvin? What are what are you doing? Is there is you do any are you do any appearances or you want to do any appearances? Or how can they reach you if you do? Yeah, I do, I've been doing a lot of them. Uh, yeah, quite a few in the, in the summer. Yeah, yeah. been pretty big. Probably do eight or ten maybe. Yeah. You know, yeah, I get calls sometimes. I can do it sometimes. I just got a call that somebody wanted me to go to Germany. You know, for two days and. No, I'm not, I'm not okay, going to do you, you, you don't lace them up anymore, though, right? No. Oh, no. No, I'm I'm going to be 79 years old. You're a young kid. Uh, at the end of the month. <laughs> 79, wow. I don't want to break a hip or... <laughs> 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 Man. Uh, you, know, you get brittle when you get old, you know? I know. I uh, found it say, out. <laughs> hey, Ronnie, people I always say, thought the best thing, and I'm one of them now, is when the old wrestlers like get acknowledged and they got to climb into the ring, uh, is watching the old wrestlers climb into the ring because all of them are just trying to get in the ring without falling, without yeah. getting hurt. <laughs> without oh, yeah. <laughs> get, getting, it, getting in the ring to me is easy. It's a getting out that, that's. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. Good. That's the yeah, hardest you, part to me. You got to watch everything when you get a yeah. certain age, man. I'm telling you. And that yes. balance, that balance when you bring that leg up to step over the rope there, that middle rope there, man, that yeah. balance, that balance <laughs> for me. If I'm not hanging on to something or somebody, you know, I tell them now, guys, I, I just don't get in the ring. I'll do everything from the first step, not yeah. the second step, but the first step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a long time, I, I, I would uh, referee, but I refereed on the ground. <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> yeah, and whoever would run in the ring, man, I was right there. But when he went by me, that's when I knocked him out. So <laughs> <laughs> with the head to some. Well, you know, I said I can't get in the ring. You know, how did, how did the head? How did the head to stone nickname come about? Come about. Come it about. was uh, Gordon Soley started that. Yeah. Bless his heart, man. He he was a good announcer. Yeah, great. Guy. You know, he was one of the best. Yeah, he's the one that started the Hands of Stone. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for today, it's probably uh, Hands of Mush. <laughs> 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 but, uh, well, you know, there's nothing like being alive. Yeah, nothing. As long as you get up in the morning and you're above ground, what the heck? You know, I'm not laying down for nobody. There you go, brother. I ain't ready. <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie, thank you so much for joining us. I've been looking forward to this. When uh, Mr. Briscoe told me he had you on, I'm such a big fan of yours. And, and I uh, I tell you, it's just such a pleasure to be able to talk to you and see you and hear your stories. But thank, thank you so much for taking the time out to join me and uh, Mr. Briscoe. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed it. And uh, maybe I'll get to, to see you sooner or later, you know. See you guys. Uh, well, I, ho I hope so. You're right up the road for me now. So uh, these yeah. these things that Brian Blair puts on are what are fantastic for for yeah, the old talent told, and, and and the young talent. I mean, uh, the the young talent don't realize how blessed they are to have somebody like Brian that organizes these things and still oh, keeps yeah. the, and oh. keeps the business alive. You know, for 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 us. Yeah. So oh, it's Brian, always, it's always fun. If I'm in town, I always try to make it there and. Uh, it seems like yeah. the last, last couple of ones he's had when I've been out of town. So I'm I'm yeah. hoping the next one uh, I'm able to see you and see everybody. But they're they're fantastic gatherings there. So good to see oh, you. I hope. I hope hope to run into you somewhere. Are you on social media? You want the people to look you look you up or anything? Do I what now? The, Do you have any that? social media accounts like Twitter or, or Facebook or any of that stuff? No, no, no. No, I uh, I don't know anything about. I got a hard time just. And we're worried, folks. That's how lucky. That's how lucky we are to have Ronnie Garvin on the air. He made a special <laughs> appearance. That's and right. If it wasn't for his great wife Glenda, we would not have had him today because between the three of us, there's probably an IQ of two on trying to get out of here. <laughs> you know, another thing too that I, I tell people, I says, you know, a lot of wrestlers don't ever say thank you to the wrestling fans. You know, everything I own in this world comes from wrestling. And this, where does the money come from? From the people. Yeah. A lot of people don't look at it that way. People earn, earn their hard-earned money, pay to buy a ticket to come and see 
you know, and uh, I've noticed, you know, a lot of people, I, I tell people, man, if you're wrestling fans, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you know, I mean, if there, were, there wouldn't be no wrestling without fans to start with. And, you know, I think that that's what made wrestling is the fans, right. you know. So, anyway, well, I won't I, I, I agree with you, brother. Yeah, it's 